This is Lainey Cameron. I am so excited to be here with one of my fellow hosts on Blue Sky Book Chat on Facebook and one of the loveliest writers and most supportive person. She's been such an inspiration to me. So I'm very excited to be here with Betley Crosby. Hey, thanks for joining me. Hi, Lainey. It's great to be here. And thank you for that beautiful introduction. I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> well, in addition to that, you're a USA Today bestselling author. You have so many books. In fact, if we have a chance, I'll put up a slide and show people how many books you have. It's amazing how prolific you are. And I love that you write Southern fiction that touches the heart. I think that's a beautiful tagline that kind of encapsulates, encapsulates your body of work. It kind of is. You can, you can be guaranteed a happy ending in my books. <laughs> Oh, that's a good way to put it. Like <laughs> along the way, but it's a happy ending at the end. And this la this latest book that we're going to talk about that's coming out now, it's out now in May, is When I Last Saw You. And it's a perfect example of that. I loved this book. It's historical fiction. It goes back between two time periods. Let's start off maybe by having you tell us a little bit about the latest one. Well, this is this is a really interesting book for me because, you know, Southerners are born storytellers and my mom was the queen of them. She never wrote a line in her life as far as the story goes, but she could tell the most fabulous stories ever. And she always told me about her life as a child and the stories that she carried on from her child. And um, they had a really tough life. They lived in the in the West Virginia mountains up in coal mining country. And there were 11 children in that family. And she told me many times about how her father left left everyone and ran off with a woman. <laughs> and um, in those days, it was amazing what a man could get away with. And, you know, in doing my research, I was really dumbfounded by the um, callousness, I guess, of society towards a woman's plight like this. And it interested me. And, you know, many times over the years, I would hear my mom say, gee, I wonder where Dalford is now, or I wonder where Everett is now. And she honestly had lost track of uh, a number of, there were 11 of them. I guess it was easy to lose track. But um, she did lose track of a number of her brothers. They were more boys than girls. The There were three girls in her family, and the three girls did stay in touch. So we would go to visit my aunt. But... Um, Really, a lot of uh, my other relatives, I never knew any of my grandparents. So the people in this story are basically kind of my mother's version of my grandparents. That's, that's awesome. And I, I love that it's inspired from your real life family experience. Um, to give people an idea of the book, it goes back and forth between two time periods. Let me see if I get this right. The 1960s, late 1960s, which is kind of the modern day. And the main character decides to look for her family after she's bereaved. She lives with her husband and she decides to try and find her family, like you say, in this example of real life, who she hasn't seen since the early 1900s, right? Or 19, yeah, early 1900s. And so it's kind of back and forth between the two time frames. And I love how you portrayed the mom in the early 1900s, Eliza. Like to me, I, I actually wrote in my own review that I have a little hard, hard time living in modern day as a modern day woman relating to someone who has, you know, five, six, seven, eight kids, right? It's like something that doesn't happen so often anymore. But you did such a lovely job of portraying her in a way that her love for those children just it shone through this book. And it made you want her to succeed and want the kids to come out okay. And it made you want the modern day character to find her siblings. I mean, you did a lovely job of portraying that character in a very different time period today in a way that was really relatable. It really is a different, it's different in the whole mindset. It's not just whether they had a telephone or not. It's a whole different mindset. And um, people saw things very, very different. I very, very differently. Um, I write a lot in set in the 60s, 70s. 50s because I just love that time period. I feel like it gives me so much flexibility. If I write current day, I have to deal with the internet and and um, if somebody gets in trouble, they can pick up their cell phone and call for help. But um, I love being in that era pre uh, pre technology era. <laughs> so um, I often write about that, and that's kind of the era I guess I put my mom in. So it was easy for me to use that as the jumping off point. And as this woman searches for her siblings and she uncovers her, she and the detective she's working with, uncover 
the individual leads to each character, you find out, you then go back in time and you find out how how it came about, how it actually happened. So it was very, um, it was very interesting for me. I found though halfway through the book, I kind of jumped away from one story and I finished the other one and then I went back to uh, the woman. So, and and I, I think I, it's I, nice I that way because yeah, it ends on a high, right? The modern day story, like you say, has a happy ending. I was smiling as I finished this book, even though it had sorrow in it. It wasn't a tearjerker. It was a really interesting, made me think kind of book. Like, yeah. So why don't we take a peek at, at a, a review of this beautiful book that is just coming out now? And this is a review from Marilyn Simon Roth Rothstein, who's also a Blue Sky host. And I thought she encapsulated it really well. She said, with the help of an investigator, a West Virginia widow sets out to search for her long lost family, a heart wrenching, heartwarming, hold your breath novel. Crosby does everything right. Get yourself a chair and grab this book. And for what it's worth, I also looked at some of your early reviews and some of the top words people are using. I love this. Bentley is one of the premier writers of women's fiction and the words people are using, truly epic, a true storyteller in action, a beautiful way of telling a story, must not miss, compelling and heartwarming. Those are some lovely things that people are saying about this book already. It, it, you know, you'd think you'd get used to it or something, um, but every time I read a review like that, I swear my heart just jumps. <sighs> I'm just so, I think it's just such a blessing to be able to do what you love to do and um, make people happy at the same time. And let me ask you a question, a question about inspiration, because you talk a little bit about how this book is inspired from real life, but you've had so many books and so many bestsellers. How do you keep being inspired? Where do you keep getting all these ideas from? I think it's always from some story in life. There's always something in life that kind of triggers a thought in my head and drives me down that road. And I never know where it's going to go, to tell you the truth. I never know at the beginning or even what the next book will be. Some people, I think, have books plotted out like five books in advance. I don't. I just They just kind of happen along. And it's usually something that someone says or does. Um, the book I wrote, Baby Girl, um, the Huffington Post picked that as the best chick lit of the year. And I was like super honored. I'm like, wow. <laughs> you know, but that was based on a true story that one of my followers told me. She uh, she said she posted a picture on Facebook and I she said, this is the daughter that I gave away. And I said, oh, wow, she's beautiful and she looks just like you. She said to me, well, if you ever want to hear a story from the birth mother's perspective, I'll be glad to tell you mine. Of course, that's like waving a red flag in front of a bull. How can you <laughs> You know, so I did in that book won so many awards, you know, because it was so it, when she first told me, I said, "Woo, this is a little uh, this is a little salty. I'm not so sure how my followers are going to do with it. But, you know, I told it the way she told me. And um, I kept in all those things that were mistakes going down the road because life is mistakes. It's just one mistake after the other. And, you know, today I look at her and she has six kids. And she is the best mom, I swear, I've ever seen. So, you know, wow. time in her life. And um, I think that being honest about it is what makes a book interesting to read. I think you can feel honesty in a character. And so let's talk a little bit about editing. And actually, before we do that, let me just pop up a slide that shows just the depth. And this is not even all of your books. This is a subset of your books. I ran out of space on the slide. But for those who are listening to the podcast, I think there are like 20 book, twenty odd books on this one slide and I ran out of space. But <laughs> this is such a prolific body of work that you have here. And I'm so excited to hear what advice you have for writers like me who are just starting out. Right, I've only got one book in the world. And here you've got, you know, it's this amazing body of work, so many bestsellers like any advice or tips for people who are trying to be maybe not as prolific as you, but I'll, I'll be happy to be half as prolific as you. Like, how do you do that? The truth is by today's standards and with so many writers out there and there's, I look at them and I say, oh my gosh, I could never write that fast in a hundred million years. <laughs> I maybe do two books a year. Um, maybe some years I haven't done two and some I've done three, you know, so it's, it's just like what moves me, but what 
my best advice, what I've learned the most from, and I started out, I wrote for business for many years. I was, you know, in marketing and I wrote all kinds of things about selling stuff and, you know, marketing and, and going, you know, advertising, things like that. But um, if you're writing fiction, the thing that I learned the most from was reading, honestly, because I read, 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 and I still am a very prolific reader. And um, everything you read, you learn something from. You learn if you like this, if you like that character, why'd you like her? And if you didn't like a character, why did you not like her? And I think those are the things that really push you into growing as a writer. You know, there's technical stuff that you learn and that you start out, kind of start out with. <laughs> you know, I don't you think you know it all at first, but um, you kind of start out with a good understanding of that and a good editor always helps. But um, the thing that you learn from reading is how to pour your heart out, how to really make that character live, how to make that person breathe and, and be vulnerable and be lovable and and dislikable at the same time. So I think those are the things that you get. You get it from reading so many other books. And um, I really prefer to read than listen. I do listen to books sometimes, but I don't get the same intimacy that I do with reading. I can, I can relate to that. I'm more of an ebook or paper in part because I think I'm a visual person when I read. And so, yeah, for some reason, I'm more able to visualize the characters when I'm reading from paper than from hearing it on audio. It's, I don't know why. Same here. Well, you know, I didn't start out as a writer. I started out as an artist. So I am really a visual person. <laughs> I was working as an artist and um, a sales rep, I was designing packaging and, and I asked the sales rep for some copy for the back of the package. And he said, I'll make something up, kid. I was just out of college. And he said, something up, kid. So I did. <laughs> And wow. So part of it. And I went from there to doing the company newsletter. And then, you know, I just ended up doing more writing than, than any design work I ever did. Wow, that's fascinating. You know, a lot of writers come from a marketing background or a kind of a copywriting type background in a in a diff or different ways. Like my friend Allison Hammer is in advertising; it's her day job, but then she writes these incredibly touching novels. In fact, similar to your and yours, and how they're really touching and from the heart. So there's something there about that kind of advertising product background <laughs> in some way. So you're bringing out, you know, you're writing two books a year, which I know a lot of my listeners are sitting there going like, how can you describe that as not prolific? Because to some of us, that seems really, really prolific. But like, how does the editing happen? Like, you can't have a lot of time to edit if you're writing two books a year. Like, what does your edit process look like? Um, first of all, I write practically every day. I mean, really, you know, once in a while we'll take off, but um you know, I just enjoy doing it. So I end up, even when I'm not writing, I'm usually thinking about what I'm writing. <laughs> and um, I don't feel like I create my story when I sit down at the computer. I really create my story in my head when I'm walking around and doing things in the house and, you know, out in, outside in the yard. And then when I sit down at the computer, I just put the words on paper. But as far as editing goes, I kind of edit almost as I go along. When I finish, that book is pretty close. And then I do one more read through. But I find that if I edit as I go along, which is I get my story down and before I start the next day, I go over what I did the day before. And usually that's, or, or even that night, sometimes I'll finish working and finish writing and I print it out and read it that night. And, you know, when you read it back, it's very different than what you thought you saw on the screen. <laughs> but, you know, even with reading the printed word, I can see the mistakes that I didn't see when I was on the computer. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I love how everyone's process is so different. I, I think if I went back and edited the previous day's work, I'd basically spend all day doing the previous day's work. <laughs> that, that's, that's one of the pitfalls of it. <laughs> that's impressive. I, I love hearing about your process. Well, before we wrap up, anything you've enjoyed recent reading recently? Like what do you and I know you're a very prolific reader as well. You read so many books, but like, what do you enjoy reading? What kind of what can you recommend to our, our listeners here? I, I enjoy literary fiction a lot. I enjoy women's fiction. Actually, oh, I, I enjoy um, um, magical realism. Um, I pretty much enjoy everything except maybe really other world sci-fi I'm not too crazy about. 
and I'm not too crazy about really gory stuff <laughs> or or uh, um, stuff that's so hot I burn my fingers reading, turning the pages. Those I kind of pass by. <laughs> um, the, the, the one I'm reading now is very good. It's The Truth and Other Hidden Things by Leah Geller. And um, that's very good. I'm really enjoying it. It's told in a very simple, straightforward ma manner. And she's a housewife dealing with life issues that, you know, she really doesn't deal with a, a late in life pregnancy and things like that. So um, I'm finding that's very enjoyable. And before that, I read The Words Between Us. That was very good also. Let's tell people how they can connect with you. I know you have a really active readers group, so I want to ask you about that as well. But um, at a high level, people can find you on Instagram at, at Bet Betley Crosby, B-E-T-T-E-L-E-E -E -E Crosby. And then you're www.betleycrosby.com. And I know you have like a great newsletter and you do like special book sales like every month on your backlist of books. Like tell us a little bit more about what people might want to do to get in on that. I'm so easy to find Pinterest, Instagram, my website. My website is bettyleecrosby.com. So it's B E T T E L E E Crosby.com. Your email list, you call it the, the VIP list, I think, or something similar, yeah. right? So, you know, so many people love paperback books. And while Amazon has Kindle books on sale often, they don't have paperbacks on sale often. And even in the bookstores, the paperbacks are not on sale that often. So every month I feature a different book and um, uh, put we put the paperbacks on sale and we sell them really for just what it costs us to buy them and ship them. <laughs> That's great. That's a great tip for everybody to know if they're paperback yeah, lovers. It's a great thing and they get a signed paperback and um, for a very little amount of money. And I, I feel like it's the one thing I can do for my loyal readers that really are paperback readers. They just don't have a Kindle. They don't like a Kindle and they don't want a Kindle. Well, I want to say thank you so much for joining me. And we are both uh, hosts on Blue Sky Book Chat. So if folks want to kind of see us both live more often, we do a lot of things on the Blue Sky Book Chat group. We it is. It's a great group. And it's a lot of fun. It's fun for the authors and it's fun for the readers. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. It's been my pleasure, Lainey.